Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Todd for Christ. Thank you for joining me today, guys, on this beautiful Saturday. It is August 17th, 2024. It is 2.55 p.m. Eastern Time as I'm speaking and recording. Praise God for the opportunity to continue to do these videos, and praise God for every single one of you folks that continue to join as we continue to show God just how much we care, how much we want to we want to grow, we want to know him more, we want to expand and strengthen our relationship with him. We just want to be used by him for his glory, that we truly want to surrender to his will. Amen. And thank you, God, so much for joining. Today's title, Unmoved, Unmoved. And I, the scriptures I was thinking was going to be in here, and there is so, so, so much in the word of God about not letting anything in this world move you, shake you, cause you to stumble. Today, guys, I, today I was struggling to find a background for this. I found some good ones, you know, guys trying to move big, gigantic boulders and all that. But when this one came up, when this script, when this picture came up, it was instant. Got to do this one. Why? First Peter chapter five, verse eight tells us to be careful, be watchful, be sober, be vigilant. Because the enemy, Satan, he walks around, he roams around, he roams, whatever, like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Guys, and I've said in the past, a little, a little baby kitty, a little kitty cat, they walk around like they're big and bad, like they're a roaring lion. I personally have never, ever been afraid of a kitten. And then you see this little kitten whining and crying because it can't move this wall. It can't get over it. It can't get through it. Probably too dumb to know how to get around it. Yeah, I'm bashing Satan. People, a lot of people be like, be careful, Todd. Be careful. Why? Why? Why should we say be careful about what you say about Satan? Do I truly believe that if it's just me and God is the only one on my side that we got a chance to lose? Then I need 10,000 other people to support me with God. Come on, folks. As long as you got the faith and you believe in God and you know you got God and you know Satan is already defeated. He's a little crying kitten. And, and that's just me. And I know, I know, I know so many that call themselves Christians are afraid of Satan. Satan has no authority. And the only power, if you want to call it power, is the power that you give him. Guys, please let this sink in. Satan is a defeated foe. What Jesus did, I'm, I'm just going to say it, it kicked Satan's ass, period. Praise God. God, forgive my language, but I believe that's righteous anger. I'm that The body of Christ has got to realize how victorious we are. We are unmoved, like today's title. All right, bear with me, folks. Thank you for that. Let me just get that off my chest. The important part, again, um, is our scriptures. Psalm 46, again, the other day we had Psalm 46, a, a snippet of it. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth is the full verse. Guys, today I have just highlighted Psalm 46. I think it was like 11 or 12 verses. It's a short one. But Psalm 46, 5 is our lead all first for today. And the word of God says this. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. There's no map. Guys, please get in there and just read that Psalm 46. Well, who is she? Who is her? Just, just read it. Just read it, please. Please just read it. And something else that really jumps out about this background, folks. Look, look where that kitten is. Look where Satan is. Right beside my ear, right beside my ear. That's what the enemy tries to do. It gets in your head. It gets in your mind. It gets in your thoughts. It tells you things. Well, you know what? This, that, and the other, blah, 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 blah. Guys, please, man, these, to me, these backgrounds are almost as, almost as powerful as the scriptures. They will never come close, but you know what I'm saying. We've got a two-parter today. Uh, first part comes out of worry less, pray more reads this, no matter, no matter what troubles you're facing, oh, guys, I didn't even read this yet, or what worries are on your mind, you have a mighty fortress in God. This, this wall that this little kitty cat can, can do nothing to, that's our God. We are in that wall. Come on, folks. He's your refuge and strength. An ever-present help in times of trouble. That's the that's beginning of Psalm 46. Because he is living within you and you're abiding in him, divine and the branches, folks, let that speak. You cannot be harmed or moved. 
folks, and I know this is coming from another devotional, but every single word I just said is backed up 1 billion percent by the word of God. Hands down, no question asked. But what is this? What's this little kitten telling you? That Oh, that's just Todd's opinion. Guys, I know there's many of you watching this right now. Satan is saying, who is this guy anyway saying these things? This is this guy. He's not a doctor. He's not a pastor. He's not. That's just, guys, I'm telling you right now, that is Satan telling you that. All I'm doing is reiterating what the word of God says, and I'm believing what the word of God says. He brings his full power, all his angels, all his resources, visible and invisible. And let's not forget the angels, angels we talked about, material and temporal to aid you, the whole kit and caboodle, everything. I love the spiritual things, the unseen things, like the attributes of Christ to put on, the whole armor of God to put on, the angels to surround us, the guys Then he gives us the tangible things, things that you can see, like our words, our hand motions, a hug, things, guys, things like that. Um, finances, buy somebody a cup of coffee, get somebody's groceries, buy somebody a new set of clothes, guys, things like that. He shields, empowers, and frees you. God brings his peace to you, telling you gently, I've got this. You need not worry. That's not, that's not what Satan tells us, though, is it? Satan tells us, man, God doesn't have this. You, you, you need to start worrying. He tells you your role in all this. It's so simply to let be and be still and know recognize and understand that I am God. That's Psalm 4610. Today, make it your aim to be, to let be and be still. Know your God is taking care of everything. He's got this. Hey, Amen, folk, man, guys, please, please understand this. Take this background. Take what we just read. Take those scriptures. Tell Satan to beat feet. Tell Satan, I don't even know why I'm talking to a defeated foe. You're a coward. You're a punk. And the only power you have is what I choose to give you. You need to get out of here. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sharing. Go. Just go. In the name of Jesus, go. In the blood, the blood that I'm washed and covered in, get out of here. God's got to say this stuff. And then we got another paragraph here by God calling at eventide. Peace must fill your hearts and lives, and then you will find that ills and difficulties and sorrows and changes leave you unmoved. All these trials, tribulations, and things in life, guys, whether they be mental, physical, uh, spiritual, relational, financial, guys, whatever, fill in the blank. No matter what the worldly things is that this little coward that walks around like a roaring lion tries to tell you and show on your face, don't let it move you. Um, practice that steadfast immobility no matter what may threaten. Jesus in the boat. That's, man, guys, I can all I can do is picture Jesus in that boat and them disciples freaking out. Jesus Sawing logs, taking a taking a nap, just snoozing away. The spirit of calm trust is the shield. Don't forget the whole armor of God. The shield is what? It's the shield of faith. And what does Hebrews eleven six say? That without faith, it's impossible to please God. So without that shield, it's impossible to please God. It's that shield that turns aside the darts and stings of adversity. Practice it, guys. I, man, two a two word sentence right there practice it. How do we do that? Every single day we do this. It's not just once on Sundays for an hour, two hours, whatever it may be. It's not just Sundays and Wednesday night. God is, guys, this is every single day. Practice, practice, practice. Just visualize you're, you're trying out for a spiritual Olympics. The Bible says we all run the race, but only one person wins. Be that one that wants to win. Be the one that wants to get that gold medal. Then you must seek to abide at the heart of the universe with God at the center with him. There alone is changelessness and calm. I, folks, I really, I really don't think I can add anything to this. I'm just going to pray that this sinks in, that you would stare at this background for a little bit, especially with that little kitten that walks around like a roaring lion. I mean, it kind of reminds me of, uh, what is it, the MGM logo, you know, the line at the end. I mean, that cat, 
no matter what that cat does, no matter what tries, it's not going to be a lion. No matter what that cat does, no matter what tries, it's not going to get through that wall. It's not going to get over that wall. It's not going to get around it. Probably it's sitting there crying and at full defeat and full defeat crying. Guys, please, please let this sink in. Understand your God given authority because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross and activate it, utilize it, put it into action. Don't go around like a big headed hot shot. Like you think you're one of these bad superheroes. Just understand the authority that's in you to be used for the glory of God to expand the kingdom. Guys, practice it. Practice it. Be unmoved no matter what. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Until tomorrow, Sunday the 18th, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see what Daddy says then. I love you guys. <laughs>